Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Mrs. Beckman here and today we're going to be going over unit 6, notes 2. So we are going to be talking about geometric means. So let's go ahead and let's talk about it. So first of all, the A and B, those are known as the extremes. So the extremes are going to make a little bit more sense in a second, but let's just write it down for right now. Then our x's are what is going to be known as our mean. So that's what we're going to be calculating out in this is our mean. Okay, so what is the mean? Well, when we're talking about the mean in terms of triangles, we're talking about the altitude. Okay, so when the means of a proportion are the same number, the number is called the geometric mean. So when we talked about mean in algebra, we talked about average, okay? So geometric mean is going to give us our altitude of our triangle, all right? So first thing we're going to do is just learn how to calculate out a mean, okay? So let's say we know that our a is 1 and our b is 4. So we would set that up this way. So we'd have that, and we want to know what the mean is between those two numbers. So we're going to cross multiply. So we get x squared is equal to 1 times 4, which is 4, and then you take the square root of both sides, so you get that x is equal to 2. So really, to get the mean of a number, it's going to be the square root of a times b. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at an example problem that's simply just calculating out the mean. So here I have the geometric mean, x is equal to 8 times 10. So then I get that x is equal to the square root of 80. Well, the square root of 80 as a decimal is going to be 8.9. So I do want you to actually calculate what the square root is going to be. So for number 2, it asks us to find the geometric mean between 9 and 4. So it's going to be 9 times 4 underneath the square root. So the square root of 36 is going to give me 6. So the geometric mean between those two numbers is 6. So let's kind of look at, now that we know how to calculate out the geometric mean, let's look at it in terms of a triangle. So if we have a point coming down here, to here, let's call that D, with this being a right angle. This is our X right here, okay? This is what we're trying to find. And what we notice about this is now I have three triangles. I have one here, I have one here, and I have one here. So what I've done is formed three triangles, okay? So what we're going to say here is that CD is the altitude. So it's going to connect right there. So then we can say that triangle A, C, D, so this guy right here, so triangle A, C, D, let me erase this so it's a little bit easier to see. So triangle A, C, D is going to be similar to triangle A, B, C. So that smaller triangle is going to be similar to the triangle that it is a part of. Likewise, we can say triangle CDB, this medium triangle here, CDB, is going to be congruent to ABC. That'll actually be ACB based on where our right angle is. So our medium triangle is going to be congruent to the large whole triangle. And likewise, our small triangle ADC is going to be congruent to our medium triangle of CDB. So what we have here are three similar triangles, and that's what the geometric mean tells us, is that the height we can use to get um, based off of the similar triangles. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at theorem 8.2. So the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the hypotenuse into two segments. The length of this altitude is the geometric mean between the lengths of the two segments. So if CD is the altitude of hypotenuse AB, so if this is D, this right here is our altitude. Here's what we're going to know. Okay, so let's just write this out. So we have, basically, we have our short side, our long side, and our hypotenuse. Okay, so I'm going to let X represent our short side of our triangles, and I'm going to let Y represent our long side, and X represent our hypotenuse. So that's true for all three of the triangles in there, for this guy, for this guy, and for that guy. So here, I'm going to take my short side, which is x, oops, I accidentally assigned x twice, we'll make this z, over my altitude or my height, which is, or my hypotenuse, which is z, 
like so. Okay, so this is what we're going to be setting up. And right now, generically, it gets a little bit confusing. Once we start applying it to actual numbers, it's going to start making more sense. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this next one. So here it says that theorem 8.3, geometric mean leg theorem, the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of the right triangle separates the hypotenuse into two segments. So we've already talked about that already. The length of the leg of the triangle is the geometric mean between the length of the hypotenuse and the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. So CD is the altitude of the hypotenuse AB of right triangle ABC. So that seems really confusing. So let's just break it down into actual triangles, okay? So what I know is I have a fraction. I'm going to do hypotenuse divided by the short side. So if I'm just looking at this triangle right here, I'm going to do my hypotenuse of B divided by my short side, which we'll call X. So then I'm going to do here my short side X over, so then when we're looking at this triangle, my shorts, my hypotenuse is going to be X and my short side is going to be C. Okay. So then here we're going to do hypotenuse over the long side. So we're going to have our C over our A, so our C over our A, and then of our other triangle, here, our hypotenuse is going to be A, and then Y is going to be our long side, okay? Again, that seems really confusing, and a lot of students struggle with this. So what I end up doing is setting it up as a series of similar triangles. So let me show you what I mean. So we've got this guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it into a couple of triangles, and I'm going to write them all out like this. I want my long side of the triangle here, my short side here, and my hypotenuse here. So let's start off with our biggest triangle, which is this guy right here, okay? So my long, my short, my hypotenuse. So my long is Z, my hypotenuse is Y, and then, or sorry, my long side is Z, my short side is Y, and my hypotenuse is 25. So that's for that triangle right there. So now I'm going to set up my next triangle. So my next triangle, I'm going to do the medium-sized triangle, Okay, so for my medium-sized triangle, my long side is Z, my short side is X, oh, I'm sorry, my long side is 20. Okay, so for my medium triangle, this is the right angle right here. So my long side is 20 and my hypotenuse is Z. Now let's set up our small triangle, which we have this guy right here. So for this guy, what was the short side of the medium triangle is going to be the long side of the small triangle. Then I have 5. If this is my right angle sitting across from it is Y. So now I'm going to set up some proportions. Okay? Like, for example, here I have Z and 20, 25, and Z. So since I have four numbers and only one letter, I can set up my proportion. So I can do long side over long side hypotenuse over hypotenuse. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I get z squared is equal to 20 times 25. Okay, so when I do that, 20 times 25, I end up getting 500. So then I'm going to take the square root of 500. So for z, I'm going to get 22.36. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase wherever I see a Z, and I'm going to write in 22.36, because that will help me in the long run. So now let's take a look at our X's. So I notice for our X's, I have 20 and X, X and 5. So since I can set up proportion with just X's and numbers, I can use that to solve. So I'm going to have 20 over X is equal to X over 5. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I get x squared is equal to 100. Take the square root of both sides, and I get that x is equal to 10. So now wherever I see an x, I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to put a 10 in instead. So now to get my y, I can just do the Pythagorean theorem. So I have 10 squared plus 5 squared is equal to y squared. So I get 100 plus 25 is equal to y squared. So y squared, so y is going to be equal to the square root of 125. So when I take the square root of 125, I get 11.18. So that is my answer for y. 
words. <clears throat> now let's take a look at another example. All right, let's start setting up our triangles the same way. Long, short, hypotenuse. So let's start with our big triangle, which is this guy right here. So for my big triangle, I'm going to have, let's see, the right angle is going to be here. So we'll say that Z is my short side and Y is my long side. Then my hypotenuse is going to be this whole thing, which is X plus 9. Then I'm going to set up the next one, which is the medium triangle. So here's my right angle. So then for my medium triangle, my height is going to be my short side. So this is going to be 12. This is going to be X. And then sitting across from the right angle is Y. So that's my hypotenuse. Then let's go ahead and let's take a look at our small triangle, which is this guy right here. So then our height is going to be the long side on our small triangle. So that's 12. And then we have 9 here. Here's our right angle. Sitting across from that is our Z. Okay. So now we want to see if we can solve these. Okay. So what I have an issue with is that I don't have numbers that are obvious. Okay. But what I see here is I have two numbers and a Z. So I'm going to start by solving for Z by doing the Pythagorean theorem. So 12 squared plus 9 squared is equal to z squared. So 144 plus 81 is equal to z squared. Well, 144 plus 81 is going to give me 225. So then you take the square root of 225, and I get that z is equal to 15. So now I know that z is equal to 15, so I can cross that off. So now I know all the sides of this triangle, so I can use it as a basis. All right, so when I take a look at this, for example, if I want to figure out x, I can use x and 12, 12, and 9. So x over 12 is going to be equal to 12 over 9. Cross multiply, and I get that 9x is equal to 12 times 12, which is 144. So then I'm going to divide both sides by 9. 144 divided by 9 is going to give me 16. So now I got x is equal to 16. So now I can do the same thing, setting up the similars for my y. So I can do y over 15 is equal to 12 over 9. So I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. So then I get 9y is equal to 15 times 12, which is going to give me 180. Divide both sides by 9, and I get that y is equal to 20. So that's my final answer for y. So it's really all about setting up similar triangles and finding your proportions. So let's take a look at this last problem. We want to find the value of w. <clears throat> okay, so using the definition of geometric mean, the definition of geometric mean, this is our altitude, right? So what we can do is we can take the geometric mean of these two numbers and it will equal that number right there. So, for example, what does that mean? So that means that our altitude, which is W plus 4, is equal to the geometric mean of those two numbers. So 24 times 6. So w plus 4 is equal to the square root of 144. Take the square root of both sides and you get 12. Subtract 4 from both sides and you get that w is equal to 8. So that's what the geometric means. If we take where the hypotenuse is being cut in half and we take the two numbers that are there, multiply it together and take the square root, then it's going to equal the altitude. That's what the geometric mean is. So that concludes your note video for today. This can be really tricky stuff, so definitely let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.